What I think we have to do is invest in American jobs, American education, control American health care costs, and bring the American people together again. Hello, my name is Kyle Murter. I'm a public speaking coach, author, and champion. And today we are going to explore how to handle difficult questions, Bill Clinton style. So in order to do this, we need to travel back in time to 1992. We are at a presidential debate between Republican George Bush Sr. and the hungry Democrat, Bill Clinton. Now things begin to heat up in our debate when a lady stands up and asks a difficult question. We have a question right here. Yes, how has the national debt personally affected each of your lives? And if it hasn't, how can you honestly find a cure for the economic problems of the common people if you have no experience in what's ailing them? Yep, it's a tough one. So what we're going to do now is we are going to analyze how Bill Clinton responded to this question because his response, response is absolutely magnificent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you what he's doing well so you can use it when you are answering questions in your own presentations. And I might also highlight some areas where he could potentially improve things from a public speaking perspective. So let's get into his response. Tell me how it's affected you again. Um, you know people who lost their jobs, well, yeah. lost their homes. Uh -huh. Okay, 10 seconds in and Bill has already done two great things. Number one, he's walked towards the lady who asked the question. He's got closer to her. And what this does is it shows the lady that he is directly addressing her, which is very important, making people feel noticed. Second thing he does is he asks the lady to clarify how the national debt has personally affected her. This way, Bill can understand deeply how she has been affected, and then he can build his answer in a relatable or way, a relatable way around the pain she has felt. And I've seen this technique used a lot by people. What you can do if you get a difficult question is you can ask a question back to clarify what the person means. You could say something, for example, like, could you give me example? And what this does is it will clarify what is being asked of you in your mind, and then you can give a better response as a result. Well, I've been governor of a small state for 12 years. I'll tell you how it's affected me. Every year, Congress and the president sign laws that makes us, make us do more things. It gives us less money to do it with. I see people in my state, middle class people, their taxes have gone up in Washington and their services have gone down while the wealthy have gotten tax cuts. I, I have seen what's happened in this last four years when in my state, when people lose their jobs, there's a good chance I'll know them by their names. When a factory closes, I know the people who ran it. When the businesses go bankrupt, I know them. And I've been out here for 13 months meeting in meetings just like this ever since October with people like you all over America people that have lost their jobs, lost their livelihood, lost their health insurance. I believe we can break Bill's response down into three steps. And what you just saw was step number one. Quite simply, answer the question. Bill answers the question the lady had. He shares how he has been personally effective because as a governor, he now has to do more with less. And it sounds simple, just answer the question straight away. But people really appreciate it, especially in politics. People meander around, dance around the question so much. Very few people give a direct response. So you can instantly stand out by instantly giving that direct response to the person who's asked you a question. One other thing I want you to notice is the eye contact Bill had. He does not take his eyes off this woman. He is creating a connection. He is showing this lady that he is talking directly to her. It's powerful. It makes people feel heard, makes people feel noticed once again. But the last thing I want to pick out about this little segment here is that Bill once again relates the question back, relates his response back to that lady. He speaks about how he's met people just like her all across America. And that's why clarifying her pain at the beginning was useful. Hopefully you can see how that ties in now. So that's step number one done. He's answered the question. 
But what's step number two? Let's find out. What I want you to understand is the national debt is not the only cause of that. It is because America has not invested in its people. It is because we have not grown. It is because we've had 12 years of trickle-down economics. We've gone from first to 12th in the world in wages. We've had four years where we produced no private sector jobs. Most people are working harder for less money than they were making 10 years ago. It is because we are in the grip of a failed economic theory. And this decision you're about to make better be about what kind of economic theory you want. Not just people saying, I'm gonna go fix it, but what are we going to do? Did you figure out step number two? It's to educate your audience. Once you've answered the question, you need to educate the audience on that topic. Give them some form of insight to change their way of thinking. And in this case, Bill educated the audience and this lady by explaining that it's not just the national debt that is the problem. It's the fact that America has not invested in its people. And one strength I want to point out to you in terms of how he backed up that claim was he used a quick fact. A quick fact. He said America went from being number one in the world for wages for, to number 12 in the world for, for wages. So if you've got a, a bold point that you're making, think about backing it up with a quick fact that um, educates the audience and also gives you credibility for what you've just said. Now, there is one thing that Bill does here which I think he could improve on, and that is to do with his gesturing. You may notice um, in the footage that he is only gesturing with one hand, and that hand is either pointing at the audience or is a closed fist. Now, we want to try and avoid pointing because for some people, pointing is rude, especially if you're my mum. And also, we want to avoid having a closed fist because when we have a closed fist, we seem more de defensive to our audience. Subconsciously, we seem like more of a threat to our audience because we associate fists with negativity. So what I think it would have been better if, if, if uh, Bill had actually had open palm gestures, if his hands had been open, if we had seen the palms of his hands, he would have been more open, more welcoming, um, and more powerful as well, especially if he had brought his other hand in too, to create some nice symmetry when he was making his points. And the very last thing I wanna point out here is what I like to call the face of defeat. I think we have to do is invest in American jobs, American education, control American health care costs, and bring the American people together again. All right, Bill started off with step number one, which was to answer the question directly. Step number two was then to educate the audience. And now step number three, did you notice what it was? It's to inspire your audience. And what Bill did to achieve this was he, he painted a picture of what the future would look like under him. He shared with that audience what his vision was. And you should be looking to do the same when rounding off a question. You should be looking to leave people in a positive place, leave them feeling hopeful about the future going forward. Because ultimately what is said last in a presentation lasts with the audience. And one of the ways Bill created this positive energy, this inspiring outlook for the future, is by using the word America multiple times. The repetition of that word created momentum. When he said, I believe we need to invest in American jobs, American education, and bring the American people together again. That repetition created that surge of energy, and it was a compelling, inspiring vision of what needs to be done going forward. So if you are ever faced with a difficult question, think about those three steps. Step number one, answer it. Answer the question as directly as you can. The audience will respect you for your direct response. Then step number two, educate your audience. Have a, a different perspective. Give the audience an insight that they had not thought of before in your answer to make them think differently after your answer. And then lastly, step number three, inspire them. Give them some hope for the future. Talk about how you hope things to, will change going forward. Talk about your vision going forward for the future. And if you can do those three steps, then you will be answering a question probably just as well as Bill Clinton.
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Every month I'm releasing lots and lots of new public speaking content. Some will be speech analysis like this, others will be little tip videos on, you know, things that you can do in your presentations to enhance your performance. And if you have any suggestions for who you would like me to analyze next, put them in the comments below. I will take a look at their speeches and I will maybe create a video if I like what I see. But above all, when it comes to answering difficult, challenging, demanding questions, remember the Bill Clinton style. Answer, educate, inspire.